Welcome to podcast 362 of Five Star Potential, your weekly football manager podcast. I'm Dave, and on this week's pod, it's a very peaceful and calm atmosphere. It's just myself and Paul, aka Mad FM. Mad, how you keeping, man? Oh, I thought you were going to call, start calling me Paul again, and it was, it was oh, really no. weird the last time. <laughs> <laughs> no, Matt, well, no do for Matt. Maybe they have officially left us to join the FM podcast, mate. Who knows? It was a rumor, but like, yeah, I, I haven't seen or heard from from either of them, so I, I don't know, dude, Dave. Maybe it's just you and me now. The uh, we're the future of five star potential. We are the five star okay. potential. In we France, are so. exactly, exactly. Mate. But, yeah. uh, today's show, we regret to inform you that we won't be doing save updates. Both of us have been on our travels, haven't had much time to actually play the game, um, but we do promise a bumper save update pod. Uh, next week, hopefully, when the boys are back with us as well. Uh, instead, we are going to be continuing on our theme of having FM25 on the mind, uh, which we'll discuss shortly. Mad, before we do, the last week or so, how you been keeping? So you guys recorded the last pod just before the Euros final. Uh, I can't believe that's been over a week already. Um, yeah. So I don't, to be fair, I've not listened, so I don't know if Duke did the old, yay, we won or are oh, we lost situation he, he, he kind of went in that direction yeah yeah um <laughs> can't believe you haven't listened dave what the hell he basically abused you for busy, quite a lot of it yeah, oh, yeah. brilliant yeah. <laughs> i gave him another quiz as well because he was he's, he was still ripping you over that that quiz he did a few weeks ago with me um yeah it feels like ages ago since we recorded i suppose just the timing of how and when we record but i guess yeah england definitely aren't the winners of the week and no. there's a lot of irish people very satisfied with that i can tell you that much um I think Spanish Wonder Kids though would be my winner of the week. Like it's you, you just saw it again. Like I mean, Yamal, Nico yeah. Williams, man, it's phenomenal. So if the two of them end up both at Barcelona, because that seems to be the talk, man, that those wings are just going to be fire. Especially in FM twenty five, that would just be absolute fire. I'd say Nico Williams will get a massive boost as well. He's already quite highly rated and high potential in game. That's only going to go up. Yamal was already a worldly at 16 yeah. in FN25. But I, again, he'd be another player that'll probably get a, a, a big old attributes boost. Maybe we should do an episode on attributes boosts for next the next game as well. Who's going to get the biggest mm. bumps? Yeah, no, that's probably something we could discuss uh, definitely in the next couple of mm. weeks or so. Barca is an interesting one because you don't really see... I mean, I've sort of maybe stayed out of the loop of the community a little bit this year, but I think that would have been a really intriguing save this year and potentially going into next year as well. I don't know really the ins and outs of their financial situation at the moment because I know obviously they were struggling a little bit financially. Mm. Seems like they might have got on top of things a little bit more if they're able to sign these sort of players, but it could be a really interesting and exciting team, couldn't it? Um, they're always know, they're always in a, some state of mess, like... You know, they talk about all these levers. That's still apparently a thing. You know, they've got players in there still who are on crazy money that they're trying yeah. to, you know, it's very hard to get rid of. It's like, it's it's so difficult to sell players who are on massive wages, you know. But then you've got Nico Williams, who, because he plays at Bilbao, and obviously it's a Basque-only policy, gets paid like over 200 grand a week. Wow. So you'd imagine they'd need to give him like 300 grand a week to get him to Barcelona. It's It's crazy. So you're not just talking transfer fee, but also ludicrous salaries but uh, yeah. yeah i guess it depends they probably have a lot of players they want to sell talks like fair and tower tours and all these so yeah it'll be um interesting there's a lot of wonder kids i think there'll be there has been some wonder kids on the move already this summer um i think there could be some more i think it's all Zhao neves to psg is a real big possibility now mm. as well uh, i think personal mm. terms have been agreed and as of right now it's just uh, finding that fee but benfica holding out for a big fee on the flip side to that and I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit, um, but I saw Como in Italy. Obviously, Fabregas now the official manager there. It's been confirmed. They're almost going the opposite way, so they're signing. And this could be maybe I did think of this as maybe one of my early FM saves for next year. Um, they seem to be signing players over a certain age, so I think they've signed Pepe Reina. Uh, they've signed or about to sign Alberto Moreno as well. So they're almost going with experience. Varane, is like, Varane, go- Varane as well. Varane is so, going there. Yeah, yeah. So it's like. Maybe like transfer policy of thirty two plus must have played had top flight experience or something like that. So that'd be quite a cool, uh, cool safety. However, they did get uh, they were racist against Wolves. I don't know if you heard about it. Yeah, I heard about that. Actually, uh, yeah. yeah, Maybe maybe I have to stay clear of those for for a short while anyway. But um, Chiefs in this day and age. Yeah, but interesting. uh, There's some exciting saves. Obviously, the FM twenty five which you'll talk about shortly. Looks like it's gonna be a, a whole new look game and hopefully some more intriguing challenges as that as there always is 
Um, but yeah, Spanish Wonder Kids definitely. I think in Ireland, Matt, is there a split? Is there are, are there some people in Ireland that are like do really enjoy England and the, and the national team, or is it very much anti England? Um, so Republic of Ireland, i.e. South obviously, of Ireland, yeah. would be yeah. largely a bit of an anti-English thing. It's it's obviously there's uh, lots of historical and uh, sure, yeah. uh, reasons and political reasons, etc., for why that is. But the majority of Ireland, I think it's almost epitomized by the Paddy Power Twitter account. That's where yeah. you can kind of get a feel for how Irish people generally feel about it. Um, if you if you go up north, it's it's a bit different in the north of Ireland. You, you've got a quite a defined split of people who would see themselves as being British or Irish. And that's where you'll find people, obviously, who are England enthusiasts. As most people might know my mother is from London, so I have to be I have to tread carefully when England are yeah. playing around her because <laughs> she, she'd fucking kill me if I start <laughs> doing what Paddy Power does. Um, but yeah, I think largely there's a bit of satisfaction. And look, you know, we can't really, we're not really ones to talk, right? We can't even qualify for these tournaments. We've just hired a manager that nobody can pronounce his name. Um, and I think he got the job because he once beat England with Iceland. So um, that's kind of where we are. So, yeah, I don't think we're in a great position to point and laugh. But yeah. there's still a little element of satisfaction. It's it's interesting this, because uh, obviously I was in I was in Malta with my family last week. And mm. they're in Malta, it's... Uh, they they do favour England a lot, but there's a certain uh, area of the uh, certain areas of the island which are very sort of Italy bias as well. Mm. Uh, but all my I saw my family on Sunday before the game, and uh, they were like oh, they were like oh, I'm praying so much that England win tonight, as if it was their team. Not like, really yeah, into yeah. Well, obviously the Maltese national team never qualified for anything as such. Mm. Quality of football seems to be getting a, a little bit better, but still not fantastic over there. Uh, I think even I think Tom FM. I saw him, he, he tweeted, uh, he wants to do one game in each round of the Champions League and he watched uh, a team from Gibraltar beat a Maltese team in, in Europe. So that's sort of the level of where the Maltese... Elite. Lead. Yeah, so it's... Um, yeah, I watched a couple of games, actually. I wanted, wanted to go and watch one. There was one, uh, I think it was a Europa League game or Conference League game live when I was there, but they had it on the TV in Malta. And um, one, the camera quality was diabolical. Um, hmm. and and two the the quality of football was abysmal as well. I think they played a team from Armenia, and it just wasn't. No, San Marino was the one game I watched mainly. It was just wasn't wasn't a good watch. But nonetheless, we we move on. Um, but yeah, well, as we were hmm. saying, FM twenty five is on the mind, um, and we've pulled an article published by our friends over at FM Scout, uh, which they've broken down a number of new feature ideas and change suggestions for the new game in a few months' time. And together, we're going to be breaking down each one and decide whether it gets our five-star potential seal of approval. I know we've done one or two pods similar to this. Uh, they were sort of the roulette ones, but I've, I've sort of had a look through the FM Scout ones, and some are very different. Uh, some are, you know, we may, may cover ground that we've already discussed um, but I'll be interested to see, obviously, Mads' thoughts and obviously yours at home as well. If there's any that really uh, tickle your fancy, be sure to drop us a tweet at, at Fire Star Pod, or if you're watching and listening on the YouTube, leave us a comment as well. But we'll start off, actually, it's quite topical, Mad international management. Their first one on this list, the whole international management experience desperately needs a major overhaul. Now, this isn't an area that's played a hell of a lot on FM, I don't think. It's nothing that I've managed... Um, too heavily so i don't know what your experience is of this um recent times but is there anything that comes to mind straight away for you that needs an overhaul or have you just not got enough time or experience with it i i've never i have never done an international only kind of save mm -hmm. if that makes sense so it's always yeah. been on the on the side of a club which never happens in real life anymore um you know where you see a manager managing club and country um, I think we recall Kevin Keegan doing it for England, but I'm trying to remember when's you know the last time I actually saw it happen. Doesn't seem to. Um, so yeah, I guess it's there's two ways you could look at it, right? One, if you if you really want to do international only, if you think about like you know all this talk now about Eddie Howe maybe going to be the next England manager, and a lot of the people are like, well, it, it won't suit him. He his his whole thing is like being immersed in it day to day on the on the training pitch. You know, th fully working with all the players all the time, twenty four. He, you don't get that if you're the England manager, right? You get yeah, the players yeah. every couple of months together, and you've got a, an intense week or two, and then there's a tournament. So if you think about that in FM twenty four, I think you are sorry, FM twenty five even. Um, yeah, you probably need you'd need to look at it and go, well, what can we fill the gaps with? And maybe it's uh, you know creating a kind of a, a space where the 
international manager can influence more things in terms of like the, the, the reputation or I don't know, like looking at clubs, facilities. I'm not sure, but again, the England manager, do they really do that? Because like, mm. there's a lot of talk now about how Southgate has kind of like the, the England DNA and, and, and he's been plugged in for so long to actually set these standards and have this all growing. Maybe, maybe it's something like that because, yeah, if you just start an international save, you're going to be pressing continue a lot and just seeing the, the progress bar just sliding along because... Yeah. Let's face it, there's not, nothing to do. So you need to figure out what, what you would do in the meantime. I think that I think that's probably one of the biggest issues, isn't it, with international manager? And it's 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 got to be an area on the game because ultimately, you know, it, it's a le- it's a part of football, a big part of football in that. But I think certainly if you're um you know, wanted to manage your purely international, it is it is something that is quite a slow process. So interesting, mm-hmm. obviously. If you wanted to be really realistic, you can go and watch players play and so on. But I just can't imagine it being much fun, to be completely honest. No, so. no, it's not. It's not too much fun at all. And the other side of it is, like, tournaments are great. So if you're managing an FM, uh, an, inter- an international team, it's actually really cool to go and go to a World Cup or go to a Euros or a Copa America. Mm-hmm. Um, but in reality, and I think about real life here as well, the Nations League is a bit shit. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like. It doesn't really draw you in to make you want to play. It's almost a burden when you're doing it in game. And even in real life, I think a lot of nations don't really take it overly yeah. seriously. It's just a gap. Again, it's more gap filler. So for me, like an international save in football manager would be better if the international real life competitions were even a bit better. I don't know how yeah. they do that, but I think the Nations League isn't great. And I don't think people really engage with it too well. No. Um, well. Yeah, you know, international management. Be interesting to hear your thoughts at home. Um, an interesting one as well, the AI for not just directors of football, well, directors of football, technical directors and low manager requires improvement as the staff role tends to be inefficient or just plain useless. Now, this is interesting because I, I think there's a fair point on this, really. I think unless you really set the responsibilities yourself and almost give full control to these uh, roles, they did. Mm. There's not a huge amount that, you know, outside of what you tend to do as a manager in game, Matt, to be fair, because directors of the football, yeah, you can put them in charge and then maybe set them to, to renew staff contracts, which is sometimes a pain because they'll recruit or renew staff contracts that you don't necessarily want renewed or, or bought in. And the mm. only other use I tend to have is directors of football. If I want a really quick scout recommendation, you can go into transfers and suggest transfer and the director of football can bring up two or three players of, of a specific role, which is sometimes quite useful, especially as a, a smaller club. But other than that, I, I think, I think this, this is quite a fair point. I think those three roles in particular need quite a big overhaul and need maybe a bit more of an impact on the game. Yeah. I think they need to be more proactive. It feels like they're a bit like, they're almost like your PA. It's like, right, you go handle all this stuff. I don't want to do. Do you know, that's like, and to be fair, there are a lot of responsibilities, a lot of boxes you can check and uncheck and you can decide who does what. But I think the point that uh, that they're making, the FM Scout are making is that there's there's not much difference between the roles, you know, where there could be way more increased specialization. And then like, does it make a difference if I hire, you know, Paolo Maldini or Dave as a party as as my Mm -hmm. technical director, like in terms of their, obviously we all want to go for big attributes and there's certain ones that you would look for, but. Again, is it, is it all that impactful? You could argue it possibly isn't. So I definitely think it's, yeah, the way what, the way you look at football now, and again, I'll use Newcastle as a, as a very live example. Newcastle have just hired a sporting director who's very different to the sporting director we had prior to, to that. So like what Dan Ashworth was doing was very much club building stuff, um, you know, unifying departments internally, uh, implementing kind of certain standards and philosophies throughout the club, blah, 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 uh, and creating various roles. Whereas Paul Mitchell, the guy we've just hired, the talk is that 90% of his role is on scouting and recruitment. And obviously we've seen him do that very successfully. So yeah, like that's evidence of real life, how important it is and how, how it's evolved and changing. Um, and, and again, it's like, will there be, instead of football manager, should it be football head coach, uh, yeah. head coach mode yeah. or something? Do you know what I mean? So like, yeah, I think the FM are usually like a sports interactive are quite good at keeping a finger on the pulse and kind of replicating what's going on. So, I'd be surprised if we're not seeing a, a lot more specialization and impact from those technical director roles, sporting director, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's becoming, like you said, it's becoming a, a much more 
common theme where a manager is now very much a head coach and responsibility is lying with other members of staff a lot more. Mm. Look, there's certain elements of the game, like I mentioned earlier, the contracts is another one. Sometimes I'm, you know, my club are bringing in members of staff that I don't necessarily want and I don't rate the attributes and contracts are getting renewed for people that I don't necessarily want to be renewed. So I understand. But even things like the low manager, I, I think that could be you know in, in your inbox or however they're gonna you know show it next year um have you know news articles where it's saying right i, I recommend this player goes out on loan i've collated two three four clubs that are interested in him on loan here, here they are and you pick where you want them to go out because it's not often especially at a higher level a manager will you know have to offer players out for loan that is the job of a loan manager the loan manager's job is to find the best club for them as well so i think just mm. things like that just a bit more like you said proactive and and help you a bit more and and maybe give reasons i think there are reasons already this player won't that won't necessarily suit you know that go to this club they don't really suit our style of play and so on um so i think there are there's the foundations are there for the roles to work, but definitely director of football and technical director, I think need a, a big push or, you know, put in a certain way where they can be more useful uh, in game yeah. as well. Um, one that I'm not a hundred percent keen on mad, a stadium and grounds editor could make a lot of people happy. Um, again, oh, yes. football manager, football head coach. How often does a manager, Get to choose football architect. Design. Yeah, football architect <laughs> design the stadium. Look again, I know if you're in a long term 10, 20, 30 year save, I know people talk about kit colours and stuff as well, which is a bit of a licensing nightmare, I suppose, as well. But mm. uh, if the game or your club came, came with an offer of well, a, a choice of saying, well, this is the area we want to go down, we can build this stadium, which is going to cost us this much, or this stadium which is going to cost us this much and whatever. Yes, okay, you could recommend something, I suppose, but having a full stadium design editing software in, in game ad, I think that's a bit far, far-fetched, far isn't it? There was a game where you could do... What game was I mean, it? LMA Manager, maybe? LMA, we, I had it, and there was another one I remember playing like around kind of like 99, 2000, where you could like choose where the fucking hot dog stands go and all this kind of crap. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I think My Miles has very openly always said like this, you know, we're trying to focus on things a manager would and wouldn't do. And that's where the line is. I do think there should be. I feel like I feel like I just the board are my enemies in all my saves yeah. because they just tell you no for everything you ask for. Um, I think that, you know, that's where I would piggyback on what FM Scout have said here. Not so much on the stadium design, but I feel like the board manager relationship should be improved like you don't have to be too easy and they just say yes to everything um yeah. but i always find it very hard like anyway, let's look for uh an affiliate you know feed par parent club or feeder club to who we can you know what like especially when you're lower league yeah let's let's try and loan some players from this team for free no 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 stick with what you have what what, what why like this is just that's yeah. kind of silly so in amongst it, obviously, you're asking for things like stadium or training ground improvements or youth level increase, all that kind of thing. I do think that there should be better, like a better dynamics between the manager and the board in game, yeah, rather than them just always saying no and being pricks about it. Mm. Yeah, I, I think there, there was something, um, something a note about sponsorships as well, being able to look at the sponsorships again. That's not necessarily the job of a manager. I think recommendation mm. is always would always help. Like that, you you know they come to you with options, and you get to say yes or no to a certain one. You know, there was always a thing on FIFA. I think FIFA manager they had that sort of thing with the the stadiums mm. and stuff, but also sponsorships as well. Where at the start of a save or a game, you would get to pick. So it's not necessarily the job of the manager, and I, I understand why people want to do it because it would be a fun thing to do. But football manager is very much of that realistic side of things where you know you want to you have the jobs that a manager does normally and you know um yeah maybe you can that. try and be you know you approach the board and be like right hey, we, we've just gone from vanorama to league one can we look at get you know getting a training ground sponsor or whatever sleeves mm. you know I'm, I'm just like maybe you're asking for them or trying to influence but yeah, yeah i don't think you'd be going out looking for looking for business <laughs> looking <laughs> for cash quite an interesting one and this is um Timed quite interestingly because I had a message about this recently. Enhance the tutorial mode for newcomers that guide you through the basics of the game, transfers, contracts, and match day options. Now, I actually had, uh, interestingly, um, I know we're not doing save updates. I had a game. Uh, I'm, I'm managing in Mexico on the Pentagon right now, and uh, 
I had two players sent off in the first 13 minutes of the game. I think you saw that tweet, Mad. I know you liked it. And then someone mm-hmm. messaged me saying, oh, like, football manager like, looks great, but I just can't get into it. I've really struggled over the last few years because I think if you leave a couple of editions of the game, you do get left behind unless you spend a lot of time to get back into the game. Um, and it was always good. I used to avoid point people in the direction of the football manager touch games because it was such a simplified version of FM. You could get yeah. used to the basics that way. Um, and I don't, I, I think there are guides on there on FM, but probably not as in depth as what you would, what you would want. So um, this is, I think, especially going into the new game uh, next year, Mad, where there are going to be a hell of a lot of changes. I would assume football manager are probably going to go out of their way to, to try their best to improve the tutorial side of things and to, to try and bring new players into the game. Big time, yeah. I think, I mean, they'll, they'll, yeah, for obvious reasons with FM25, if everything's totally different, which we expect it to be, you know, like not like we're used to seeing with all the, the menus and where everything is located, they'll, they'll definitely have to increase that for existing players, whatever about new players. Um, yeah, the thing for me is, uh, like, what did they say? My 10 million, 10 million players or something for the first time. So there's a hell of a lot of new people buying and playing the game. I'd be really interested to see figures for how long they last. Do you know, it's like when yeah, you yeah, yeah. you have a YouTube video and it gets hits, it, but you're like, stuff. this person only watched it as far as until Mad FM started speaking and they realized it was Irish. <laughs> and then they, they close the browser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for listening if you got this far. Um, I'd be interested to see, like, is that happening? So you get 10 million new players and maybe 5 million of them you know, only got as far as the first game or something. You know what I mean? Like, uh, mm. I'd imagine there's interesting stats there. The, the th- I think I talked about this a few weeks ago. So I started playing CM uh, in Chapter Manager 2 in about 1995 or 6. So uh, Dave, you uh, was probably weren't, yeah. uh, weren't on the planet. I know. Um, but, I, but like, I literally remember you know, playing it, sitting there by myself, figuring it out. And being able to get up and running and actually just smash it. I recently at Christmas gave FM24 to my nephew, who's also 10, 11. And he just like was bamboozled. He had no idea what to do, didn't know where to start. Um, because it's quite content heavy. It requires a lot of reading. The tutorials require a lot of reading as well. So like words that aren't always best, especially for, you know, today's society are being a, a lot more leaning towards videos and the more interactive side of things. So absolutely needs most if they want to i'm not saying they need to design the game for 10 year olds it's probably just gone beyond all that now but it needs to be easy for someone to pick up and actually get sucked into it um and it probably assumes that people are like you and me who we've played the game for a long time the way it's set up now yeah that's why i think a lot of people complain about the early screenshots that we've seen of of fm25 so far mm. i think that that simplicity of the screens probably is going to help bring in these new players um, mm. So I would be intrigued to see, and maybe even reach out to creators to help out with the tutorial side of things. You know, it's it's quite an interesting, um, interesting. They're not going to ask you and me. They're not going to ask you and no, me, Dave. We're not good enough at the game. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> well, they'll ask us how. Can you show people how to change the attribute colours? I was like, yeah, I think I could just about manage that one. Yeah, smash yeah. that. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next one. Introduce postponement of games due to weather conditions to add the realism of fixture fixture crunch now this is actually already a feature this is in the game yeah yeah, yeah i don't uh, think people lower, more so a lower league lower, maybe. of course yeah i mean in, yeah. in the top level the chances of you having a postponement of games is so unlikely so um yeah this is very much still in the game um so lower level as as it is more frequent is uh is there um there was an interesting one dave just i think it's just above that uh lower the occurrence of overpowered new gen wonder kids um, now you're more used to seeing underpowered new gen wonder kids when you <laughs> see your own new gen in most people's saves but that's interesting like I, I I'm not sure I have felt this in the past but I, I don't think I've really felt it in this game yet where I, you get new gens coming through and they're like it's way better than any real life player would ever be or, or, or has been you know I've I've That's had yeah I think I think this year it's there's a really good balance like I'm seeing longevity of, of especially top level players like like I said I've managed quite a lot and 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 play teams or seen teams over in Saudi Arabia and yes I know it's players towards the end of their career but physically and mentally they're still players that I would have 
at the top level if I was managing in the Premier League or, or whatever. So mm. I certainly think the longevity of players, as long as they're still playing, of course, if you leave a player on your bench or in your reserves, physically they're going to deteriorate quite quickly. That would happen mm. in real life as well. Um, but certainly I think the level of the, sort of the balance and new gen to you know real life players is certainly a lot better this year as far as I've seen anyway. Yeah, it's probably like what they've mentioned here is especially in terms of mental attributes. So that may, maybe that's a thing where new gens are more likely to have the really high determination or um, yeah, like really high decisions or think you know and, and things like that. So um, yeah, it's it's I I, won't, I wouldn't say it's a bad one. I think if there's a if there's an opportunity to improve it and balance it more, hundred yeah. percent on board. Yeah, yeah, have an option to become an interim manager and get the job or not based on your short term results. Now. That, hmm. That's an interesting one because interim managers only tend to get the job if they're sort of affiliated or associated to the club in some way. Like obviously sometimes a chairman or director of football can have a relationship with someone or well, more often than not, it's a first team coach Sam or just a manager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, where would you, my fear then would be like you, like I don't know, the Arsenal job is available and you, you really want it but you, for, for whatever reason they they've got it posted as interim and if you go in as interim the likelihood is they're not going to keep you otherwise they would have just hired yeah, you I, don't know. I, feel like, I feel like there's a dodginess to it or it, it, it kind of could break yeah i'd be i'd be interested if they could somehow li- i don't know get this in a way where it's based on relationships like previous directors of footballs that you've worked with or previous coach mm. members that you've worked with you know, on your relationship statuses and um, in, in game, I'd, I'd be interested if, if that. But I think that's cool. That would be quite a difficult thing to introduce. I know it's becoming quite a common thing in in, in football now. There, the, the, there is an I mean, interim manager option on the game. There, there is that in the game, but that's for AI. They don't. You can't apply and yeah. join a team as an interim on there. So. Um, it's similar to we've talked we've talked about things like being an under 21s team manager or reserve team manager whatever you want to call it like a youth team manager because again you look at Zabi Alonso he started out as um was he at Real Madrid to Castilla or whatever? I think he was down yeah. there and he was at Sociedad maybe the BT I can't remember the specifics but that that's the path for a lot of managers um so it'd be interesting whether that could also be brought in alongside it for FM25 yeah, chairman mode. I'm thinking I'm, we're just going to repeat some of our answers from earlier. Chairman mode. Chairman mode. Despite being considered out of sc- scope, it's something several people try to replicate anyway. I'm pretty sure there is a game made by people that used to work at Football Manager called Football Chairman that you can download on iPhone and Android, Mad. But again, this is just this is a completely different game altogether, isn't it, really? Mm. Again, it's it goes back to, well, the game is Football Manager. Um, you you kind of reference it there, or the article references like we've seen people do director football challenges, um, and Clades has done a couple of things on this as well, I think. But, yeah, um, I just don't know whether they would invest any resources in that when it's basically all about being the manager. I think there's the diversifications of head coach and manager what they do, but yeah, I can't see them investing in this at least not yet. Mm, yeah, there's, there's certain ones. A lot of personal life ones allowed to spend spending of your wages to speed up the process of acquiring manager badges or arranging team meals that can boost morale. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I know well, that's, did, we're all going yeah, to Nando's. Yeah, <laughs> fairly, but yeah, if you're in non-league, you take it to McDonald's. But if you, you know, if you're <laughs> Premier League, you can go to a Michelin star restaurant. I think again, mm. Miles has been very um, vocal on this in the past because it's so hard to. You know, you're looking at the percent, what percentage of your wage. You know, man, some managers might go from paycheck to paycheck. You don't know, and other managers, mm. I, I don't know. It, it would be hard. I, I I like the team meal stuff, but I think keeping the team bonding, training thing is just one generic thing. Probably suffices with yeah. that, doesn't it? I think we mentioned. I think it was might have been one of the roulette ones we did before, where it was like tracking your earn or kind of managing your earnings and being like, a, you know, like. A, somebody actually did a save on this years ago with an only fools and horses theme so it was like he was oh, a yeah. boy and he was just like trying to basically become a millionaire as a manager or something but again you'd have to self-manage that i don't think the game overly facilitates it again think, is I this where we want career time earnings. spent i think on your manager yeah. profile it says career earnings to be fair but 
Yeah. Well, I've earned very little then. South Sheens <laughs> aren't paying me much, I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think I've, looking at things like that is very, very difficult, I think, as well. Um, so I'm look, see if there's, there's any, anything else. Expand the interaction module for both players and media to be more original and less repetitive by utilising GPT generative AIs. So that is very much a 2024, 2025 uh, thing mad with the sort of surgence of uh, AI over the last 12 months or so. But I think this is something that football manager look to build on and grow every year. But ultimately, uh, managers do get asked the same questions every couple of weeks in press conferences. You know, it's just that I think, you know, we're playing in each session of football manager, sometimes a space of one, two, three, if not more months. Whereas in a press conference in football, you know, you're only seeing one a week. Um, so I think c- certainly that is something that you'll see you know, often. But I think fo- that is an area that football managers do want to grow and Im- improve every year. Um. So yes, I I gave up doing press conferences. I got so sick of how long it was taking and all the clicking. Like I I recall, I I must have been in the Swedish save. Maybe I can't remember which club I was at. I remember counting like twenty two questions. And I was like, no, but I just found it hard to believe that that a club at the level, do you know, I can't remember, I must have been a lower level club, but I was like, at that level, you're not getting 22 questions. Or if I was the manager, I'd still, as I'm doing 10 questions, done, that's it. So I've given up on that. And I just think it's too much clicking. Uh, Joe used to joke about it, second on the left, second on the left, second on the left, in terms of clicking the option. The the fear or the, the approach with caution on that though is, if you go down the route of having it more, AI, GBT. Um, I, I suppose when, when you respond to a question in game, you'd like to think it's doing something somewhere. <clears throat> and if you end up with this kind of vast thing, I feel like a lot of them, those interactions will just be placed, what's the word, placebos? They won't do anything. So you, yes, it'll be fun and it'll be interesting and a bit of crack, but it might be pointless as well if they don't actually connect to something or have an impact. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think certainly some of the questions do impact morale and things like that but um i i I don't know how i'm sure ai will become uh some sort of feature or some sort of part of football manager in in the years to come whether that's next year i don't know but um we'll wait and see but that is certainly an area that people want to improve on a lot Uh, to be fair i think in the pentagon challenge i've probably done a good 90 to 95 percent of the press conferences i don't know why i feel like it's just something that i've wanted to do to make sure things I said correctly. And I think I think it is. I think it is better if you do it. I just grew fed up of it is jarring the time, you know, and and, and it's yeah. slow, I just feel like I I'm slow enough as it is that that was just going to slow me down even more, you know, in terms of yeah. how you play. Yeah. Um yeah. an area that I don't think well, I've not used in a lot long time crowd noise, more dynamic crowd sounds and fan chants where possible. Um I don't know if this bothers many people mad that many people have sound on in game. I'd imagine a vast amount of people don't, um, because if you think about how people play the game, you know, unless you're sitting in a, in your own office or a quiet room with nobody there, you know, like uh, quite often I'll be playing on the laptop and my my other half she's in the room just, there, yeah, yeah. so I could I wouldn't have the crowd sounds on because the TV, you know. But the flip side of that is I I never watch a match on mute, so you know, really yeah, really on the t- on the TV, so. Um, plus, then the streaming as well. I think sometimes crowd noises when you're streaming isn't isn't ideal either. So yeah, I I'd imagine. Again, we could be proven wrong here. You'd love to ask the guys in Sports Interactive, but if they can see, because they'll have the data, right? They can see how many people have the sounds on or off. Of course, yeah. you could have it on and just mute your laptop, right? But uh, if they feel like not enough people are using it, then why would they go and start recording a bunch of stuff or getting groups of fans together to go singing and and, and recording it on the phone? No. I don't know. I would, I would assume again. I'm, I may be completely wrong. I would assume, depending on the area of the of the world that you're in, there are different crowd noises. I don't know. It's not obviously it's mm-hmm. nothing that I've, I've sort of studied or looked at because it's such a strange thing in football. But fans in South America chant and celebrate different to fans in Europe, for argument's sake, and fans in Spain celebrate different to English fans. So I don't know if there are different in crowd noises on there, but. Um, the best you could probably look at is the way, you know, even the international tournaments, you can see the different fans with um, 
with the obviously the songs are different but with the different musical instruments for that whether it's drums like if you go if you ever go to um an ireland game in the aviva in dublin there's some guy in there somewhere that has a bell uh, <laughs> you know, when you're watching the game so yeah. you just start hearing the bell ring at the most random points and then people just have a little cheer but a lot of other people are like fuck that guy with the bell you know <laughs> So, um, yeah, bring back Vuvuzelas, maybe. I was going yeah. to say, the one thing with this, and, and I think it's probably something that, sorry to swear at people, that something that FIFA do in their games, or EA, rather, nowadays, um, it's quite a generic sounding chant, like Wolves have, um, Wolves A we or whatever, and you can, and you can hear mm. it in the background of games, it's very sort of muffled, and there's probably other teams that have a similar chant where it's... Duh, 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 or, or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You could do that, but one other thing quickly sort of going back to the stadium customization thing and obviously it probably depends on licensing as well but having just a, a really because some stadiums in game are completely different to what they look like in real life and i don't know again if this is a thing that is programmed or into the game and it's something maybe the researchers for each team could do is basically just describe what the stadiums is it four separate stands is it one complete you know circular ground um, you know, just to make that add, add that level of realism, if you're not going to add the chances stuff as well. So I think the actual match day experience could work a, a lot better, to be fair, and, and just easy things. So I would be intrigued to see if that is an error of the game. Because I don't know if here's how James... For, here, go on, go on. I was going to say, here's one for you, Dave, and, and you, you'll you probably know this. You could have an option in, in Football Manager to... Put away fans in the top tier, highest corner yeah, of the yeah. stadium out of the way because you know that in St. James's Park, right? You have to climb like yeah, yeah. 19 flights of stairs and you're right up high. But like, um, there's a bit of an element of shithousery in there, but also, yeah. Like, yeah, like if I was the manager, well, I can't remember which stadium I was looking at before where the away fans were like quite pitch side in, in a particular side of it. And I was like, that's Walsh, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, as a Really, maybe, maybe. About so like the wall, the walls away end is awful. So it's like the whole bottom tier of a stand. So a lot of fans hate going to Molyneux mm. because it's um, it's pitch side and all down the bottom tier across the ground, not behind the goal or anything. Um, See, it's that's strange. Not, like if I'm the uh, the whole, if I'm the home manager there, if I'm the Wolves manager, I'm like, I don't like that. This isn't good. For I don't. Us, I don't do know, you know if I don't know if I've told you that before. So there's there's two things really. One is that the fans struggle to create much atmosphere because they're all so spread out. But secondly, Nuno hated it because Nuno said, when my players walk out, the first people they see is, is the away fans. But purely yeah. with how Molyneux is built and security, to get the 3,000 that you need in the Premier League, they have to have that bottom tier because that's the only okay. area of the stadium where you can they enter in the one-turn style and you can, and, box them off, yeah. and you can s- s- security. Because if they just mm. had half the upper and half the lower... The turnstiles are on opposite ends of the stands. It's it's weird how it's built. Okay. So, um, yeah, Nuno hated it. Nuno really didn't like it. But um, yeah, it'd be funny if you could if you could set things like that. Because again, I, I know this is going back to sort of who picks the stadium, who designs the stadium. But I, I would assume managers have a say in, in certain things like that psychologically as well. But um, if you feel strongly enough about it as well, you know, I think yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. Um, introduce a harder mode in terms of difficulty for people who would opt for that. For example, being able to beat Real Madrid as Aberdeen within five years isn't something that had happened in real life. <sighs> this is strange, but because there are certain, and I think this is just genuinely people, without me being rude, probably using tactics that are probably overpowered and so on. Um, I think, and no disrespect to us two, I think if we just had uh, started the game and got an out-of-the-box tactic, I highly doubt we'd be able to get Aberdeen beating Real Madrid within five five years. I think that's something not not comfortably anyway. Yeah, in a in a one off match potentially, um, but I certainly feel if you're wanting, you know, we saw it with Joe with Family Cow. He, he did so well for so many years. I even Portugal. Dupe Dupe Siren there. Does Dupe has Siren Sister in the Champions League within yeah. about seven seats? Like fair play to Dupe. You know, he plays the game well and um, he knows the game inside out. So he, he he's obviously shown he's able to do it, but. That's an echo of, you know, should it be possible to bring a team to the Champions League within seven, eight seasons? Like What from, can change that, Matt? Do you think what what's, what needs to change? I mean, the transfer, in my opinion, strategies and transfers is probably okay. I think Dupes talked about his struggles in terms of finances and bringing players in. But what do you think it is? T- t- 
losing more games, but uh, when would that hard? be? Yeah, maybe, that just maybe people it's... off and they turn the game off. You know, they, they, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's that to be careful then. Yeah, because if you're if if you're constantly losing, people turn the game off when they're losing. Do you know? Um, yeah, I've 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 done that. It's not a save and reload, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the idea of a hard mode. It, it, I, I do, I do agree with the sentiment that it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be as easy as we've seen it, where where people are able to do these things. Yeah, it could be, it could be more around the finance finance side of things, the players you can attract, the loans you can attract, um, because I think that is a great accelerator. You know, signing um, players on loan, maybe unrealistically. Um, because I think, yeah, sometimes I find myself in a particular save having to choose not to sign a player because I didn't believe that could happen. I think we spoke about this when I was in Sweden and it was like Harvey Elliott was yeah. was in the interested um, player filters, player search filter. And I was like, I'm not going to sign him because Harvey Elliott was, is not going to go to Sweden on loan <laughs> ever. <laughs> so, yeah, I think there's maybe that's something because I find that's something I have to regulate regulate myself to stop the or prevent it from becoming too kind of unrealistic so mm, yeah, yeah i would agree yeah i don't know i i would be interested i think that's just a been a f- common thing throughout football manager for a long long time so i would be interested to see if things what can change to make it more difficult i suppose again as well it's down to manager experience i mean i i, I do think in, ter- in terms of improving your attributes and getting your coaching badges you attributes can improve quite quickly and you go from someone that's a Sunday league manager to an elite manager within five or six years which I think is maybe mm. a tad unrealistic but we'll um, we'll see I'm sure these are things that they're working on behind the scenes uh, we'll try and skip through a few more uh, I mean fair play to the guys at FM Scout such a in-depth uh, uh, article more competitive scouting some clubs that have academies in other countries maybe this could be a venture to explore um I think this is fair, man. You know, clubs do have other, other, you know. This is what we talked about with the the feature roulette. We talked about, you know, where your scouts are actually living in a, and you know, it's not all clubs now have ten scouts. Hey, hey, go go over to Croatia there for three weeks. They actually have like networks who are based in these locations. So, yeah, I can I can only agree with that. We've seen how it works. Look at look at Wolves with Portuguese players. Yeah, Uh, I think that 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 definitely has opportunity to be improved so i fully agree with that agreed um just having a quick look if there's any others uh touchline shouts is mentioned quite a few times but as we're aware that's going to be something that's going to be looked at mm. or, or taken out completely in fm25 as well um there's some there, there are some like for example, like introduce post-match video review sessions with players reviewing clips of action but again you can do a match review in your training, I think as long as you've got a data analyst, you can add that um, as a, as an option in your training as well. And that's something mm. to be fair, Joe had recommended me to do that quite a lot the last time I did a Pentagon a few years ago, because um, that adds you know certain match familiarity and stuff like that, and, and tactical familiarity again. Um, data analyst, I like this given... one. Oh, sorry. Sorry, no. I... <laughs> this one has just made me laugh as my eyes have landed on it. Stop the nonsense of players getting annoyed when praising them. Because you see those memes on Twitter. Where yeah. It's like, you know, you played well. And it's like, fuck you too. <laughs> like, it's, it's a no, bit extreme. But that I, is I one. Agree. You can uh, uh, praise players and then their morale drops to angry or upset. Yeah. So I think that's, again, that's something that Football Manager have spoken about quite a lot, haven't they? In, that, in, ter- in terms mm. of that being an area that they've just got rid of completely. I would be interested to see if there's some way or what they're going to introduce to change that. If there is going to be an in-game shout sort of thing or... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the morale goes up and down, or what can you do to 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 make that happen? I guess because that's often what we think the shouts do, right? The other thing with with those kind of interactions or you know player reactions to things you do, I I I'll be baffled if we go into FM twenty five and we still have those. So you know when you're if you're um, offering a contract, yeah, uh, or you know you're uh, trying to sign a player. And then they just kind of say it goes red and you're like, okay, I'm not talking to you about this anymore after like two or three offers. I just yeah. don't see this. This doesn't, you know, there needs to be more over and back, more yeah. open. I know you can kind of reopen discussions. I think that was a, that was kind of brought in, but I just feel like, you know, sometimes when a, a transfer collapses, so it's like, you know, Wolves have agreed to sign Dave as a party and then the budget or whatever collapse at the last minute. 
and then it's like okay I'll just go make the offer again let's get it done and they're like no no pissed off at you now yeah. <laughs> not talking to you for three weeks that that needs to change for me that's a bit silly yeah I think you need I know you can speak to the agent but I don't know I think there is always almost like a cooling off period isn't there after you get like cancelled yeah, nego- yeah. and found negotiations there is almost like you've got to wait a short while or wait for the agent to re yeah, the, you then, and then the window can close as well you know and that it can be really frustrating whereas in real life you're, you'd just be like you know on yeah, WhatsApp hey, dude, contract, you know, yeah. 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 <laughs> give me a call look. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's any of us on there mad that you've you've picked out or if that is all for today there's, I mean, there's quite, there's quite a bit in there, really. Um, it's, it's worth reading the list, guys, because there's probably another I'm twenty-five sure that we didn't. Yeah, we literally was so much more that um, that we didn't put in. But I think with FM twenty-five, you know, this uh, this article came out about three weeks ago, I think. So mm-hmm. there's probably been even been some stuff come out since. It's pretty clear that like the FM twenty-five isn't just going to have all of these new features and shiny things ready to go from day one or from game one this is the start of that new chapter so as much as we want to talk about all these features and hope all these changes in there we also have to be a bit realistic and expect that it won't all have a lot you know what's quite refreshing about that article by the way unless i've missed it unless other than match noise there's no complaints about the match engine in there you yes. know normally there's always match engine complaints and stuff and mm. again this is only the fm scale one we may go into someone else's or, or we see an article sometime soon and there's uh all match engine complaints but i think we are quite excited because next year there's meant to be changes in the match engine i'm really intrigued to see how what changes or what improvements there are in that but i i, I think like i've said so many times before each year the game gets better and better and i've certainly seen a lot more realist realism in the match engine there's been a lot less issues that i've had and, and faced in previous years to be fair so I don't know if you're the same, Mad, but really... Uh, yeah, I, I think the common consensus is it's just, like the match engine specifically in terms of um, getting FM'd or really, really ridiculous things or I think it's it's as clean as it's ever been. If I was to critique one thing, I I would say, and th- again, this is probably down to either how I manage or the clubs I manage, <laughs> but I do feel like uh, far too high a percentage of the goals conceded are from an individual mistake. So mm-hmm. a player just decides, here you go, have the ball. True. Um, yeah, true. Versus like goals that are just well worked by the other team because that's where goals are largely scored. You don't often see, oh, one fella just did something stupid and that leads to a goal. So that, that for me could change. But uh, overall, it's very hard to criticize the match engine because I think they've put so much work into it over the years. Hence mm-hmm. why they've not probably spent as much on changing other things, which is what we're going to see now yeah. in FM25. I think, no, that, to be fair, that the one thing on the match engine, I do have a lot of players dwell on the ball or pass it directly to an opposition. And of course, that can happen um, in real life, but it's probably, like you've said, not something that tends to happen every single game. So, But again, going back to my comment earlier, we play, what, six, seven games of FM in one sitting sometimes. So it may well, the actual balance of it and the actual um, ratio and, and timings of it probably works out the same. So that... I th- think uh mad is all for the fm25 features do, do you have a quiz to finish us off or um i had a little one yeah i was actually just kind of semi throwing it together as we were speaking really um mm-hmm. and mainly because i know when dub listens back to this he's going to want an opportunity to come at you again so oh, i think no. it's an opportunity for for you to get a bit of redemption uh dave um, after you know, how did he do last week? So, like I said, I've not I've not managed to listen yet. Did he? Do, uh, he did pretty good, in fairness. What um, was the quiz? I, I caught the star because I had to edit the pod. I caught what was the quiz again? I'm actually just was, opening it here because um, was defend this one was it something? Yes, yeah, because oh, we were talking it, yeah, about yeah. defenders. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had uh, like a centre backs. We it was the the ranking on transfer market of okay. the most expensive centre backs in the world. Um, I'll do a little, it's a little FM themed one for you. Okay. So I was just basically looking uh, in FM25. Uh, I've sorted the player search filter. FM25? Or 20 Sorry, FM24, apologies. Yeah. I don't have access to FM24. <laughs> um, FM24. So I loaded up a brand new save and I've basically just put in a filter for any players under the age of 20. And because of some of the the views that i use i can see a lot of players with uh who have first nationality and or second nationality 
So really simply, I'm going to just pick out some players who are showing at the top of the, you know, sorted by value, who happen to have, let's call it, double nationality or dual nationality. Um, they probably obviously already declared for a team because they're some of the best wonder kids in game. And we'll just see if you can kind of have a guess who these players are. Sounds okay. simple. I'll just give you two yeah. nations, basically. Okay, I got you. So one on the list here, fairly high up on the list, is both English and second nationality Irish. Under tw- under 20 or just in general? So 20 or below. 20 or below. And he is the second most valuable. Is that Evan Ferguson, kid. is it, maybe? It's incorrect. Um, so the primary nationality of this player is English, but he has a second nationality of so Irish. It's obviously not rice. I not didn't Greek. know. Not rice or not no. English. Oh. This is interesting, and I did not know this. If you didn't know it, this is going to make mean it's quite tricky. Under twenty, it's not niche. I just, I, I just didn't. Palmer, no, no, it wouldn't be Palmer. No, it's not Palmer. Under twenty, I can tell you this player does not play in England. Ah, oh, why should this? So it's obviously not Bell, not Bellingham, is it now? Jude Bellingham is it correct. Is. Wow! According to uh, the football manager here in front of me on screen. He has second nationality, Irish, which I was not aware of. Wow. We could have had him. You missed, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) One that got away. Right. I have another player on the list who is primary nationality, German, second nationality, English. That's Jamal Musiala. Jamal Musiala. That was an easier one for you there. Yeah. Excellent. Next, uh, I have a player who is primary nationality, Italian, second nationality, Nigerian. Nonto? Wilfred Gnonto? Incorrect. Uh, ah. He may be both those things, but he's not on my Is list. Is it the right back? Is it the right back? Uh, who, did, who this? Is it the right back or not? Oh, um, I think I know who you're trying to say, but he actually isn't a right back. Oh. <laughs> he's a left back. Left back? Oh, um, is it Destiny? Adoji. Yes, Destiny Adoji. Oh, I, I was thinking of Coyote. I was thinking of, sorry, Michael Coyote. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, he's, yeah, he's right back, well. you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Good player as well. Mm-hmm. Next on um, my list, excuse me, <clears throat> I have a player who is primary nationality Argentina, second nationality Spain. Uh, Garnacho. Garnacho, indeed. That was in the news recently as well, wasn't it? They were talking about mm. that. There was a bit of a profile done on it. Okay, next, I have a player whose primary nationality is American and his second nationalities are English and Portuguese. Is that Yunus Musa? Incorrect. Oh, Portuguese. American, English and Portuguese. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not Eunice Musa. Timothy Weir's too old. Uh, oh. This is a goalkeeper? player that I've... No, he's not a goalkeeper. It's a player that I've been quite fond of in the past. For a couple of reasons. One in particular. This is a player whose father also played football. Professionally. It's not Gio Rainer, is it now? Giovanni Reina. Oh, I thought, I, I thought he was older than twenty. That's why I'd never said it. No, that, he's actually only like twenty. Still, yeah. Oh, yeah. still. That's why it yeah, caught me crazy. out that one. Yeah. He's still only a young lad like yourself, Dave. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think that's six. I think that's six we've done. So we'll do a couple more. Next up on this list is a player whose primary nationality is Dutch and his second nationality is Spanish. So Javi Simons. Javi Simons is correct indeed. Good shout. Another player that could um, have a... I know there's a lot of uh, rumours about him this summer as well. Yeah, even Newcastle were linked with him, you know. Um, which is... Good yeah, player, Matt. Very good player. Us. But I, I think he's out of... I think he's out of Newcastle League, <laughs> being honest. Right, we'll wrap up one or two more. I have a player here whose primary nationality is English and second nationality is Ghanaian. Uh... Uh, 
and bearing in mind, you know, I'm 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 at, I'm still quite high on the top of this list of you know when I sort. It's not Kobe Mainu, is it now? It is Kobe Mainu. Oh, great shout. He's on form tonight, lads. Dave, you're doing much better this week than, uh, than a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Dupe will be so proud of you. And last but not least, I actually was going to do Evan Ferguson, but you already threw it out there because he actually has English as his second nationality. So I'm going to give you one last one that might find interesting. And this is a player who is... I'm just picking the right one for you here. Uh, primary nationality Spanish, second nationality Ghanaian. Williams. Yes, nah. Nico, Williams. Nico Williams. I had to throw that one in there because um, it's interesting that he plays for Spain, but his brother well, Inaki his plays for, yeah. Uh, yeah. for Ghana. That's pretty cool. I think Shaka is the same. Shaka's brother plays for, I think it's Albania. Yeah, and he plays Granit for Shaka's Spain. brother. Uh, yeah, the uh, Boateng brothers as well did the same. Jerome played oh, for yeah, yeah, Germany yeah. and Kevin Prince played for Ghana. That's another yeah. quiz in itself. I'll have to do yeah, exactly. <laughs> so That's Perfect. the quiz, Dave. You've done well. We'll give him a round of applause. He's, he's redeemed you. himself. Dude would be so proud. Yeah, I'll take that. Gosh. I'll take that very much. But guys, that is all for episode 362 of Five Star Potential. You can find the links for each of us, uh, obviously me and Mad, uh, in the podcast description or simply by visiting fivestarpotential.com where you can find all of our latest football manager content. I'll make sure I leave a link to the uh, FM Scout article as well in uh, today's description. So big thanks to them uh, for helping and giving us the inspiration for hmm. this one. Uh, Five Star Potential is available on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify and most other popular podcast apps and platforms with a new podcast released every week. Thank you all for listening, and there will be more from us next week. Say goodbye, Mad. Arrivederci. Goodbye. Thank you.